At least I can talk, bitch. Really? That's what you bring to the table? That you can talk, sort of? Hey, I bankroll this channel. Dude, you're not supposed to say that while recording? Like, hi. It's Sol, and, and welcome back to another episode of Warcraft Weekly, the show that is, well, it's a little bit less green. It's called Smaragdine. Really, that's what it's called, Smaragdine. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back to the show that has a little bit less Smaragdine. Dude, that sounds, like, that sounds like an STD. Ew. Yeah. As always, we have another great show, and today we're mostly going to be covering patch 8.3 Peter content. This is almost it, folks. The last major patch of Battle for Azeroth is coming out in about a month or so. So today I shall inform you of what you should be most angry about this week. Before that, though, let's give thanks to the people above. These are the wonderful sponsors who helped with this uh, much needed background upgrade. And don't worry, I'm going to be putting some more stuff here um, in the coming days. And of course, a warm welcome to our newest patrons. We, um... Okay, let's get right to the show. First off, some classic news. This week, free character transfers between realms closed, ahead of Battlegrounds opening up next week on December 10th. So gear up and get ready to relive the nostalgia of waiting in queue, depending on the faction balance of your battle group, that is. Then wait for paid character transfers to be available. Also this week, Blizzard re-clarified a series of bugs involving the way PvP honor and kills were being tracked. They assure players that it's only a display issue and that no kills or honor is lost, but it's pretty hard to convince players that their 40-man raid groups have not been yielding as much honor as they should. This is just part of the complaints over the classic honor system, which is not the same system that we complain about today. In classic, in order to rise up on your PvP rankings, which is how you become eligible to get the coveted loot for some classic Linkin Park PvP videos, you need to not only grind more honor and honor kills than you did in the previous week, but you also need to do better than your fellow faction members. So if you happen to be on a very high populated PvP server, well, good luck with the grind. It was announced at BlizzCon and now it is here to ruin you. Dottie is now available both as an in-game pet and a plushie. It's so cute, I want to carve it up and cook it slowly, while it's still alive. But even a baby alpaca isn't immune to the self-righteous indignation from players who are far too focused on the fine print. The translation is that the proceeds of the sale in the in-game pet and plushie will cap at 3 million US dollars. After which the money is gonna go to, I'm guessing people with, you know, jobs. There's been a lot of back and forth on this debate, but I've read the stuff and I, I see this as more like, like, what? Historically, none of the charity purchases that Blizzard has done have totaled up to 3 million, so that should really be the end of the conversation. I can hear it now, but Saul, it's about the principle. But Saul, it's about the principle. Oh, shut up. I gotta be blunt here. It's it's not about the principle. Don't kid yourself. It's about needing something to complain about because it gives us, the people of the internet, purpose. So as you finish your rebuttal to that kind of snide comment, consider this. The reasons for the donation limits, for all I know, there are legal reasons for it that I just can't understand. But what if? What if? Blizzard is just trolling us by adding in this dollar amount limit that we don't understand for the sole purpose of enraging us to get us to buy into this pet or this plush now before the three million dollar cap thing is hit. So that way we're not going to give a dime to evil Bobby Kotick. <laughs> we're so smart. But of course, then we would end up shattering their old donation record of about two and a half million dollars. They'll have turned our own anger against us, those freaking tricksters. So did you buy the pet? Oh, you damn right I did. Speaking of throwing away money, let's get into this new segment that I'm going to call Quick Opinion. Ooh, Quick Opinion. Do-do-do. Woo! Oh. Oh. Sorry. Last week was Blizzard's Black Friday sale, which, by the way, is now over. Wowhead posted an article detailing how to take advantage of one of these sales, which offered new WoW accounts their first month for half off and use this promotion to quickly obtain the new recruiter friend rewards from the system that was recently launched. I'm going to try to be quick with this one. I think this was a pretty scummy article to put out. I know, I have a pretty bipolar kind of feeling with Wowhead. It's like, oh, I love them, and then this time I hate them, and well, whatever. But to see this article that talks you how to make throwaway accounts, 
it's not really in the spirit of this whole recruiter friend system. Now, granted, it's definitely something that people would want to do, and then, and I'm sure that I've seen some people that have done it. But an article like this is just not something that I would expect from Wowhead, because it's like the fan site is encouraging fans to spend even more money than they normally would have for something that shoulda, woulda, coulda been a store item or even just items that are available by playing the game. Like encouraging people to bypass something by spending extra money, that's like, that's worse than shilling. And according to some of your guys' comments, I'm an expert at that. If Blizzard really wanted to cash grab, then they wouldn't have gone through this whole process of rebuilding the whole recruiter friend system. They would have just put this stuff out on the store. But they're not looking for that. They're looking for a long-term solution for people who are on the fence about playing BFA or WoW Classic or the upcoming Shadowlands expansion. They're not looking for uh, transactions. They're looking for subscriptions. And no, I am not buying my way through with this. I'm not trying to mass recruit people like on social media or anything like that. Um, if anything, I'm more interested in the wings and the halos and the weird stuff that's coming in Shadowlands. So based on the timing, I mean, they totally lost my interest with trying to participate in the system. Good going, Blizzard. And that wraps up the quick opinion. Do do do, quick opinion, yeah. Not that quick. Shush. So let's get into the latest build of the 8.3 PTR and we'll start with what was on the thumbnail. Random numbers, RNG. I don't complain about this so much as I simply accept it, but with this being the PTR, I wanted to take the time to talk about this corruption system a little bit more and give some more critical feedback. In a nutshell, the randomness is just a bit too much, so feel free to take that one home. Keep in mind that this is still an early look at the build and there's still like a month or so until the patch comes out. Stuff has been changing with each and every build in somewhat dramatic ways, so hold off on the pitchforks for now. Early on when I ported on Corruption, I featured buffs like additional stat values that had three available tiers. They weren't super interesting, but you know, okay. And then I reported on weapons that have some pretty cool effects, but of course, with the drawback of adding Corruption. In this recent build, Wahed had reported that some of the more boring effects were removed and that they're seeing new effects from the Mythic Plus Weekly Cache, which I think is terrific. Bonuses for everyone and all that, you know? Even BOEs that come from raids can have corruption on them, which will make the player run market especially interesting. But what we're also seeing are much more powerful procs and effects that also have three tiers of corruption. So take for example this item that was sent to the folks at Wowhead. Gloves with this powerful effect that should be on a weapon, and another weapon effect that's on a ring. I'm going to guess that in this build, anything can proc anywhere, so until I know for sure that this is intended, I'm going to withhold my thoughts on it, because right now, those thoughts are pretty negative. The greater offender that I can talk to at length right now, though, is that these new procs, they also have three tiers that can randomly roll. That means when a raid boss is killed, or we open up a chest from PvP or Emissaries or Mythic Plus, we have to consider far too many things. We need to hope that one, the item actually drops, that the said item has a corruption affix that we like, and that it's the corruption value that we want it to be. What makes this third bullet point especially frustrating is that more corruption does not necessarily mean better. Currently, there's a two-handed weapon that has up to 75 corruption on it. Imagine being a Fury Warrior right now. In my opinion, this just needs to be kind of reined in. Just give these sorts of procs a single value, just one value, so we can avoid awkward player behavior like, oh gosh darn, the corruption level is too high, but I don't want to cleanse it, so I've got to hold on to it and then grind my way up so I can get more corruption resistance. But then a couple weeks later, maybe I'll get the same weapon or item that drops that has a more acceptable amount of a corruption on it that I do want to use. And so I'm like, oh, I have this other item and I, I could have given it to someone else. That that sucks. Unfortunately, right now, corruption has even more levels of randomness than Titan Forging. It almost makes you miss it, which might be the plan all along. Moving on, in a recent post, Blizzard eased the fear of some players who are concerned that the Auction House NPC would be removed from the Brutusaur mount, which by the way is going to be moved over to the Black Market Auction House after the launch of Shadowlands. In so few words, they said no, 
Unlike the Reforging NPC that was removed from the Yak, because Reforging was removed, they have no plans to remove the Auction House from WoW, so the Auction NPC is gonna stay. Here's a link to help you earn the gold so you can get yourself a Brutasaur belt. Well, that's nice of you, Bob. Let's take a look. And downvote. In this PTR build, the legendary cloak has undergone a big shift in the bonuses that it provides for us. Last week, the cloak provided an occasional main stat buff that lasted for a few seconds. Think of it like the old concordance buff from Legion. This time around, the cloak has an on-use ability that dispels corruption effects and makes you immune to them for a few seconds. It's a pretty interesting way to encourage players to dabble in some extra corruption and giving an ability that encourages higher skilled play. The small issue that I have at the moment is that, well, that main stat buff, that was... It was pretty cool, so I hope that higher ranks of the cloak will give us that buff, uh, maybe at max rank or something like that. Uh, we just haven't been able to do enough testing yet. My other issue is that because this is corruption, people can opt out of the corruption system altogether, or at least they can just stay right under their own corruption resistance and then cleanse everything else, which would mean that this extra proc or this extra ability that they would get would effectively not do anything at all. Actually, what makes it even worse is that the cloak has an on-use effect, meaning that for engineers, you won't be able to attach uh, your goblin glider to it. And that's, that, that really sucks. Oh, the horror. Now you have to get on your flying belt. I know. The Volpira racial abilities have been updated to make you want them maybe a little bit more. They have an ability called Bag of Tricks, which by default can either damage or heal for a modest amount. Apparently, this bag can also be expanded by finding more so-called tricks throughout the world that have yet to be discovered. It's pretty neat. It's kind of like the engineer's uber spanner, except that it's, you know, usable and it doesn't cost gold. I would love to see racials across the board get a pass. I mean, I know it's unlikely, but seeing these new customizations, these bags of tricks, the mole machines, uh, these Loa selections, it has my blood out feeling pretty jealous. All we have is our arcane flatulence ability and our beautiful, perfect bodies. Sigh. Oh, and, and that's the show, by the way. At the start of the week, I read your guys' thoughts and feedback and I responded to them. Thanks to that, I'm making little teeny tiny changes to the channel and the other space for both you and for myself. Because, you know, if you're happy, then I'm happy. And if I'm happy, then you're happy and yada, yada, yada. I have three winners to announce. Each of them is going to get a month of WoW game time. That's to Morona Pup, Thomas Augusto, and Varajo. Virajo. You know, it's there on screen. Leave me a comment below on how to contact you and then I will get that game time to you as soon as possible. One of the comments mentioned a Q&A, and that's an addition that I've been wanting to add for a long time. Q&As are fun, and it's been a while since we've had, you know, the awkward Josh and Ian Q&A fun time. I want your questions, whatever they are, so leave them in the comments, or Twitter, or the Discord channel, or Twitch, or wherever. And wherever possible, whether it's a separate video or here on the weekly, I'm going to read these questions and answer them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna interact with you folks, fellow fans and critics, with some Q&A. So don't be shy on what to ask, because I probably won't be too shy on ignoring things that I think are either really irrelevant or really inappropriate. So what's your toilet seat size? My what? I'm gonna do one now for funsies. Kraken Latte over on Discord asks, Hey Soul, honest question. How do you find the motivation to do your videos? What keeps you going? I've got so many scripts written for videos that I want to produce, but frankly, I procrastinate. What do you do? That's actually a... Pretty good question, Kraken Latte. Frankly, I procrastinate, like, all the time. If you didn't know already, YouTube is pretty much all that I do, so you, I guess you should expect more out of me, like videos every day or something like that, but it's tough. I take breaks, I get distracted, I feel like watching a few hours of Law & Order. But particularly to your question, Kraken, there are two things that keep me motivated when it comes to producing and publishing content. The big one comes from just just the excitement and energy from wanting to share something that I've learned or discovered. Take for example the Shadowlands conspiracy video that I just put out, and as of this recording, I have no idea how it's doing. For all I know, it like super bombed or demonet got demonetized or got taken down or whatever, but I just wanted to share my thoughts. 
exercise some knowledge and express my viewpoint in my own way. And it was just fun. I was really excited to put it out. The other thing that keeps me motivated is that as I'm doing the work, I, I definitely don't get lost and end up looking at other content creators material. Part of me staying motivated, whether here or anywhere, is to avoid things that will demotivate me. As a small channel, there's a kind of feeling that I get in my chest when I see like one of these massive content creators uh, share some sort of idea. And I may entirely disagree with this idea, but it doesn't matter because this large channel, well, now they control the conversation. They, they control the narrative. It's easy to feel like your voice is too small and that you're lost. You, you may despair, and, and I have. So I try to avoid that. I stick to pushing the content because while I am a small channel, I know that there are people like you folks at home and elsewhere, my audience who's going to watch and appreciate and respond to the work. So that's the sort of thing that I want to do more of around here in my interactions with uh, the viewers, the patrons, the subscribers, the visitors, and everyone who's passing by. So for the next couple of weeks or however long, I'm going to be more aggressive with encouraging you folks to ask questions about me, about the channel, about WoW and gaming and other things. Um, and then I'll, like I said, I'll either do them in separate videos or I'll make it a segment on the weekly. As for today, though, pff, we're done. Let's get out of here and enjoy the rest of the day. Of course, please, oh please, like the video if you enjoyed yourself and subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy. Mm -hmm.